what's going on guys i'm trying to stay warm and build some computers <laughs> say what's up i'm doing the coin yeah all right guys enjoy this video because we are going to finally complete our video pc build trust me man you've seen it you've seen the preview you're gonna love the finished product peace so first thing first that i'm going to do is unscrew the glass there's the uh there's four screws here i'm gonna place my hand on the glass because i don't want this glass to completely drop on my on this floor here take out screws move that off to the side all right now gently remove and there's our glass. This is the bare bones of our case. It's missing something. Hmm. It's missing the computer hardware. To be honest. That's what I think. I think I think it's missing the computer hardware. Now let's fix it. Let's fix it. But before we do install our computer components, let's take a look inside the case. You have a stock fan here, and it's only one fan that's in the front. Then they have the secondary fan in the rear. So it comes with a total of two case fans. However, the beautiful thing is you can install two fans in the front. Pretty sure there's a way that you can probably do four or three, depending on your fan setup. But with these type of fans, more than likely we can slide this bad boy down here a little bit more and then install another fan here, which I am going to do. More than likely it's gonna be that fan there. I know, I know, I know it is filthy. You know, we'll, we'll get it a little bit clean. We'll get a little bit clean. For all you guys that are into water cooling, this case will be perfect for water cooling. Um, you can install your reservoir and fans at the top, or if you want to do them on the side, it's all up to you. Everybody can take cable hiding. Uh, you can hide your cables behind this case uh, and then feed your cables through there. So this is the other side of the case. As you can see, we have our cabling. It's been driven throughout the case. And run down to here. So this is our front fan. These are our case cabling. When it comes to your power LEDs, power switch, hard drive LED, got your HD audio. And this is our USB. So we're gonna push that off to the side. Let's see, in here, so in here we have our accessories, which includes screws. Um, you got your standoffs for motherboards. It all depends on um, your setup and configuration. Oh, you even got zip ties. And here is our hard drive bay. So looking at this hard drive bay, it looks like uh, there's two bays, but you know, when it comes to solid state drives, uh, we definitely have space to put multiple solid state drives. So for example, if I just were to install a solid state drive, just look at that. However, you know, you wouldn't just throw your solid state drive in it, you will actually put it in a uh, tray. So I'm more than likely just gonna temporarily just, you know, sit my solid state drive in there uh, and then eventually I will actually mount it on a uh, tray. But for right now, definitely this big old gunker monk can't go in there. We just need to mount it to the actual screws. I love how they put their name into like every fine, fine craft of machinery. This is one beautiful machine, I tell you. Anyway, enough talking. 
I'm going to just pretty much get to just throwing my computer hardware in since, you know, on the old computer case, I kind of walked you guys through of what I was removing. In this case, I'm just going to put everything in there and we're going to see the finished product. All right, I'm installing my standoffs for the motherboard. The whole concept of standoffs is to give the motherboard clearance from the computer case. We got our standoff there, standoff there, come around here, standoff here, and standoff here. These are all hand tight. With this bag of standoffs is an actual standoff screw bit. So as you can see, that will go on the standoff and then this will turn into your Phillips. And that way you can tighten it up. Don't tighten it too much. You don't want to strip it. All right, guys. So we have our motherboard is now reinstalled into our computer case. Now, what I'm going to do is remove this fan and heat sink and install our replacement uh, CPU. Um, I was going to say new, but it's not you. It's a used uh, AMD FX 8320 CPU. So this is the AMD 8320 uh, CPU that I purchased from eBay. It was listed as for parts not working. The issue was is that the pins for our uh, CPU was bent. So I unbent them. So we should be good to go. Again, uh, it was listed as for parts and not working, so it may still be an underlining issue, but for $30, I'll take my chance. First thing is to remove the power. Let's go ahead and remove our brackets here for the fan and heat sink. So that should loosen it up some now we're just gonna gently free up our heat sink from the CPU and this is our thermal paste and this is our heat sink and fan so now that we have that free I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and then I'll be back. All right, she's nice and clean. We're gonna go ahead and unclip. Loosen the bracket up there. I don't wanna give it too much cause that's where she wants to stop. So I'm gonna let her stop right here, fill her out. So it feels like that CPU is not gonna come up. So that's giving me an indication that the CPU is still locked into our socket. So what I'm gonna do now is Give it a little pull. And now I see that the CPU did move, which means it's free from the motherboard. So I'm gonna lightly lift her up. It's job well done. None of the pins are bent. So this is the 8320 AMD FX card that we purchased from eBay. Uh, the pins were bent. There were multiple pins bent. I'm going to be very delicate in reinstalling this one. I just want to let her go down easily. It's in there, that's all I gotta say. So more than likely when we boot it up, it may not work. But again, purchase this CPU from eBay. It was listed as full parts, not working, okay? Got it for $30. So if this eight core processor works, I got it for $30. <laughs> now you guys may be saying, why would you buy a CPU from eBay that was listed as Full parts not working now here's the thing 
my first gaming computer when I was young. My dad got it for me. It was a gaming computer, which the person has stated, you know, it doesn't work. So they're getting rid of it. So my dad knew at that time, he's like, you know what, my son's into fixing computers. No worries, I'll take it. I'll just give it to him and he'll fix it up. He gave it to me, did a little fiddling around. It was like, hmm, these CPU pins are bent. And I mean, those suckers was bent. So young as I was, I was like, okay. Took a flight hit and just started bending the CPU pins back and put it in the computer and bam, it worked. I was just like, Nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Actually, my gaming computer, uh, it's got an AMD FX 8350 8-core processor, which I bought that 8-core processor for $50 for parts not working CPUs. And the only problem was it had multiple pins broken. So in history, I'm used to fixing CPU pins that are bent, not broken, but bent. So this is our new CPU cooler, T46W, Spectrum Dual Cool System. These are the specs. Could be used for Intel and AMD processors. Let's see what we got. Time is ticking. So now take into consideration that we replace our CPU from a six core to an eight core. We definitely want to improve the airflow to help keep that CPU cool. So with the bigger heat sink and the dual fans, we'll be able to accomplish that task at hand. And these are some really, really nice thick blade fans. They're not thin, they're nice and thick. Okay, they're not that flimsy type of fans. They're real thick type of fans that will uh, cut you. So what we want to do is identify which way we want the airflow to go. Say for instance, my hand was the motherboard. We're going to install the fan on the motherboard like this. And the airflow is going to go through here and process to the back of the computer. That's the way I'm setting it up. I'm going to put my computer case down here just to see if the current br bracket for the CPU uh, and fan will fit. This bracket here is compatible with our installation here. And uh, look at that. It got thermal paste on me. But um, yeah, it's definitely compatible. However, it's tight. It's real tight. It's hard to see. So what I'm going to end up doing is pretty much... I'm going to remove our motherboard from the case so that way I can get access to here. Say for instance, this was the bracket, sits here. That goes over that. And then that goes like that. So then that sits down. All right guys, so I did get it to work with the stock bracket that we already have here on this motherboard and it worked perfectly. So now I'm gonna take it back off and apply our um, thermal paste and then reinstall it and then put this motherboard back in the case. Uh, when it comes to how much thermal paste you should put on your CPU, everybody's honestly got their own opinion, but me. So I, I just put enough to cover the CPU and then the, the heat sink itself will also spread that thermal paste. I'm just gonna put it in the middle may not be able to see because of my hand Let's put it enough in the middle you guys may say that's too much but again applying thermal paste is based on your preference a lot of IT professionals such as myself we all do it to our preference I know my hand is in a way, but I just want to get it spread around. Got to do what I got to do. All right, I got to put my hand in front of the camera. I just have to do it. 
All right, there she goes. Installing a heat seek fan such as this. The much easier way to do it is by removing the motherboard. And that way you can access everything from your CPU, fan, cable, uh, from the bracket. Everything can be easily accessed just by removing your motherboard. So I almost forgot that we have these wonderful fans that we are going to install on the top of my computer. And that's basically going to provide ventilation for the top. So we're going to install it with this face downwards like that and this flush against the actual top of the case so that way it'll draw that heat away from our computer case so we got the two fans installed now what I'm gonna do is so our memory sticks so i'm gonna install our agalto uh, gaming capture card as well as our graphics card uh, and then i'm gonna focus my attention on installing the power supply get the power supply installed and run my cable through for the graphics card uh, power cable through for the motherboard and power cable for our actual uh, CPU which is located down there so that's the power port for our CPU so for the power supply we need to run this power supply through here the way to do it is to unscrew these two screws here which is gonna unlock the back door and basically manually feed your wires through so after you get your power supply in put the back cover back on and then screw on your power supply tighten it down so that way she's safe and secure We got our power for our graphics card, power for the motherboard, and power for the CPU. The only thing we need to do is plug up all of the fans to our power supply, install the hard drives, get the hard drive SATA cables connected to our motherboard, and connect the power from the power supply to the hard drives. So this is the stock tray that comes with this computer case. And you can pretty much get your solid state drive to install on this tray without needing any additional enclosure. So it's, it's ready to go. Um, you can do solid state drive, you can do your regular SATA drive. Got your tray here, got your regular SATA drive. So you just pretty much line up your screws uh, and get them bolted down. We got our two hard drive. The top hard drive is the solid state. The bottom hard drive is just our standard SATA drive. We're gonna go ahead and plug up power and data. 
this particular motherboard, it only has three locations for a fan. One being for the CPU, uh, and then two being for case fans. So our motherboard's uh, fan ports are maxed out. Fortunately, these two fans, they have the connectors so that way it can receive power directly from the power supply. So the actual two fans that comes with this case have a three pin connector, which uh, you will typically install it to your motherboard. There you go. She is all set up and ready to go. CPU or memory change. Please enter setup to configure your system. So we're trying F2. The CPU did change. Remember, we purchased the CPU as a full parts, not working CPU. So keep that in mind. Well, I'll be done. $30 CPU that we purchased from eBay as full parts not working with bent pins i mean that we had a, I, I believe i had probably four or five bent pins on the cpu and she is working but uh yeah guys as you can see it's it's definitely two o'clock so that time is correct all right there you guys go amd fx 8320 everything is working fine as expected that is such a relief, guys. So last night, stayed up until roughly like 3 o'clock in the morning. I got this bad boy built. I got to just pretty much take off tape. Um, there's connectors that will allow you to combine multiple fans to, you know, it's say, for instance, you run out of fan ports, or you can say connectors or slots, whatever you want to call them. But say, for instance, you ran out of space, or your motherboard to connect fans, you can actually combine them uh, with a, um, a cable. Um, I think it's like, I think they call it like a, a fan cable adapter. As a true technical term, but I, I just call it fan connector. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a um, throw a little demand to it, resource demand. See how she does. Uh, I'm pretty sure she's gonna, as uh, far as temps, we're gonna maintain some good temps. And I, I, I definitely want to listen out for the fans, the fans on a um, CPU. Other than that, I love it. I absolutely love this case. Like I was kind of like, you know, a little hesitant when I was looking at the case on eBay because you can't really look at a computer case in and out online. But for the price, for the price of this, and this was open box too, for the price of this, man, woo, it was perfect. Sell at this state. The reason why it's listed as open box is because they actually open it to make sure everything is okay inside, such as the glass, all of the other components is there. That's why they open it and then they close it back up. So, man, I love it. I absolutely love it. This manufacturer, what was it? Fractical Design? You guys, you guys did a wonderful job. Like the pictures that you guys have online, it does not do any justice in comparison to the actual computer just just in its complete form like visually there you can't you can't look at a picture of, of of a fractal design cpu case you can't it's just like you look at the you look at, like to be honest when i seen a picture of this online i was like man that's whack that's bland uh just t temperature glass ah it's whack but when I actually unboxed it, man, oh Lord, this thing is wonderful. It's wonderful.
it's wonderful me and, and and it's hard for me to say that well i wouldn't say it's hard for me to say that but it's surprising that i say that because i am a fan of the phantom computer case no matter how old the uh, phantom pc case is it's got everything that you need from water cooling to just to 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 spectacular airflow and this it has the same thing the same thing man i love it man so this is the final results everything is running absolutely smooth on our video rig the upgrades to our cpu memory and video card as well as the new gaming computer case is just wonderful let's go ahead and hit the space bar button so that way we can play this video that we're actually about to upload to youtube absolutely amazing adobe premiere 2020 let's so right click on the tax bar and hit tax manager let's look at the performance here guys performance look at this cpu low percentage memory low percentage and it's not using that much memory look at that right now it's only committing 23 but is utilizing five okay this space zero percent zero percent one percent zero percent uh 13 okay okay so this is our amd r9 390 five percent so low hardware utilization this is awesome all right now that's not the only thing that we got up we got obs check that out five of them Woo, look at that camera me hello no lag oops i just almost knocked the camera out gaming rig all hardware resource on this gaming rig is for games come on guys now all we gotta do is do live stream gaming, monitor comments, respond to comments, upload videos. Man, this is awesome, guys. We saved ourselves so much money, guys. So much money, and we got some good performance. Some people may hound and hinder because we're still, you know, we're still utilizing DDR3. Okay, I get it, I get it. But that's absolutely fine because in the professional world, guys, where I actually work, DDR3 is still state-of-the-art memory, especially when it comes to servers, guys. You know, typically servers in the professional world, they pretty much have like a lifespan between six to eight years, maybe more because to actually upgrade a server, man, you got to take an enterprise system downtime and to get that, man, you need a blessing. So trust and believe me, guys. The hardware that we have in this computer, it's not obsolete. It's working to our benefit of which we pretty much needed for Adobe Premiere, uh, OBS or Elgato software, uh, whatever gaming capture software you want to utilize. This computer works. It works perfectly fine. So if you guys see this video on YouTube, know for a fact that I didn't pay tons of money for my video pc rig i built it myself by utilizing parts that i could find online for cheap guys cheap i'm telling you guys it's the best way to to, to build a pc is to build it on a budget by utilizing pc parts that have a affordable price range now if you got the money you got the money go ahead and splash and splurge you know <laughs> if you got that much money <laughs> you know do me a favor uh, send me some money to uh <laughs> cash at me or uh send me some money on paypal do something like that just do something nice my primary reason to really show you my pc bills is to kind of influence you guys that you can do it too okay you know even though i may have mentioned that hey i'm an it professional but trust me before i even became an it professional the only way i learned about computers is just by giving a, a shot giving a try so that's basically what i want you guys to do never be afraid to try something new 
you may get it right the first time you may not get it right <laughs> the second time <laughs> but guess what eventually you're gonna learn from your experience and you're gonna prosper so on that note guys don't forget to hit like comment and subscribe to my channel because we got more content coming for you baby peace